Walmart and I spent probably way too much time in there. I just kind of like wandered around, probably part of my mood, which I'll explain in a little bit. But I got it. This lemon mug, and if you guys know and watch my other videos, I drink a honey lemon tea every night, which I love. And so I saw this mug, and I was like, I just, I can't. I need, I need a little. I just need a gift for myself. So I got this mug, which was all great and fine until I went to check out, and it didn't have the little taggy thing on it. So then the lady was like, Oh, now look. So she spent a while, ended up taking too long, and I didn't push the buttons. So then I scan everything. Anyways, I'm waiting for her. And I remembered, wait, I have the app. So I just looked it up on there, but the guy still wanted to wait because she was still in the middle. I was like, this could have been a lot easier. But, oh well, I have time. I was in Walmart way too long looking for things. And it just kind of, yeah, mm -hmm, just little rocks. But I will tell you in a second what's going on. So, let's go. Am I smoothie? <laughs> Because I'm literally living, living off smoothies and granola bars, chips and salsa, and eggs. That's all I've been eating for a little bit. I don't know what it is. I think it's my food allergies to fat, not food allergy, sensitivity sort of thing, which I've talked before about. I'm going to go over more if you guys would like. Let me know in the comments. But I found foods that will sustain me. I'm getting my nutrients. I just to drink it on our smoothies. And it's pretty good. <laughs> like, I kind of want to complain, but like, it tastes good and I found foods that I, I like. I actually have not had this strong of a reaction in a long time. Okay, my goal is to clean this out so I can actually have a trunk. You can see it's just loaded with stuff. So, they all cleaned out. Maybe rearrange things a little bit, but we definitely need more room here. Okay, still some bunch of stuff because I like to have everything prepared. But, I think it is pretty good. A lot more room there. I have some storage now. Alright, so I look at my seats. My seats here, I was super excited because I found a little handle and I can pull. That was a couple weeks ago. So you think storage, more storage underneath, right? No, like, what's the point now? Like, I guess we can take that off if you, like, don't want a cushion room, but for me, I'm like, waste of time. Look at that now. Like, really? I really was looking for that extra space. Okay, I have been... I have been avoiding this. I don't know if it's avoiding it is the right word, but putting it off, because it's hard and I, I feel like the more I think about it, face it, the more she's gone. <sighs> so, to start the story, I do have my tissue box and I have my water and I'm in my car. Because it'll probably be the most privacy that I'll get. And it's kind of turning to a little safe even in here. So, let's get into this. Um, I maybe should do a little backstory. About a year ago, my uncle passed away. And I didn't share that in any of my videos. Um, because I didn't want to share it to try to get attention. I don't want people really feeling bad or keep saying things sometimes that's harder and also I just I just didn't really how I mourned it then I didn't really want anyone to know but I feel like that maybe by sharing more of these situations it will help other people um, who are struggling with the same or very similar um, things that are happening um, so with my uncle, we don't know why he passed away. Um, still, like, they got, they did a full autopsy, they found some reasons, but there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of reasons, um, uh, behind that, um, that I'm aware of. Um, yeah, they weren't, they weren't totally sure, there were some things they thought, but they are wondering maybe if there's an underlying issue from um, another relative, um, that had mentioned something. 
Um, while why that one, um, it hit really deep because my dad, um, so my grandpa passed away when my dad was 10. And I know how big of a struggle that was for him. And it was one of my biggest fears growing up was losing uh, my own um, dad. And so when I heard that, I was in so much shock and it just hurt. And I mourned for the fact of my dad losing his brother and for the, his children and all those different struggles I knew my dad went through. And it was really hard and I, it was, it was a really hard experience, um, how that'll happen. Now, Saturday, um, I got some texts that my aunt went to the hospital uh, and they weren't sure what was going on, um, but just to pray. And so we were praying really hard and it took several texts, but she ended up she stopped breathing and passed away and they're still unsure what happened by the time she got to the doctor um, things are already pretty late and they're wondering they're gonna they're doing autopsy on her too to see if stuff is related and maybe there's some genetic stuff um, that's happening in our family I'm not really sure what's going on with that but here in the news, I, I'm trying not to, but when I talk about it is when it hits. And when I first heard the news, I, I think because I was, it wasn't a for sure thing at first, it took longer to set in. And then when we did finally get the news, I just kind of sat there and I was writing um, an essay for school um, against abortion. Which um, ended up being a really good essay. Not sure how, because I was not fully there. I was really in shock. And the days following that, I really just kind of... I tried to put it aside because... Because facing it means she's gone. And that she's not coming back. This is one of my dad's younger sisters. Um, my dad's the second oldest of seven, so she was still quite, she's pretty young. And it was really, really unexpected how everything happened. Um, she's always <laughs> growing up. Um, everyone's always told me that I look like her. And we have a lot of similarity. I definitely look more like my dad's than my mom's side, but definitely. And like her little clone but we've had a lot of fun we've done a photo shoot it's like crafts and I've always felt like I'm really close with her and it's one of the things that just doesn't feel real it shouldn't be real especially after my uncle passed it really it was the same exact week exactly a year from when my uncle and so to have that on the anniversary I mean, like that happens again just doesn't feel real and I please like I just I don't want anyone just like keep coming and just saying sorry I've heard sorry or condolences and life is real and it happens and so I don't want to be doing this for any sort of attention I promise I just really want to be able to maybe share my experiences to help you out with my uncle, it was a lot of, I cried and cried, and it was super hard. Whereas my aunt, I just, this time it was like, I just try to not think about it. And maybe it's just my part of me, just try to feel numb makes it feel better, which is probably not the best situation. I've really needed to. There's been several times where I've about broken down since then. And I'm just trying to hold it in because I, I just don't, I don't want it to be real again. And... I don't think there's anything wrong about either way that it's happened. We all mourn in different ways. There's all different ways, different things we're going through, and we have to do it our own, own ways. For a lot of my siblings, they kind of all went together and they got together with the rest of the family and were talking. And I really, I needed that time alone. This time, just be by myself, where the death last year. I wanted to be around more people, and so 
I don't think you should feel bad for kind of how you react to these situations because you don't know exactly how you're going to react and it can be different like different ways you different situations and maybe how you hear it or how close you are to that person and um, how things are going to happen um, some of the biggest blessings I've received in this was just knowing that she's in heaven um, I remember the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints and we believe families can be get together forever and we've all been sealed in the temple which there's actually one right there is where I'm parked out because this is where I've been getting receiving a lot of my peace and where I've been coming to think a lot And that family's going to be together forever, and so we know that she's with the rest of her family. We know she's with God, and she'll be here to help everyone out, especially her family, her personal family. And she's there to help. But just knowing that she's with God brings so much peace, and knowing she's with my uncle, and my grandpa, and even her son who she lost um, a couple years ago. And that's brought in so much peace to me, and I'm sure a lot of other families to know that even though you know you won't see them now and for a while, There's been several other blessings and some are too personal to share. One is, um, I was sitting at work the other day and I had this thought and I remembered back the day after Christmas, we didn't talk much on Christmas, um, I was really tired that day and I pretty much, we kind of got into my grandma's late and I was kind of sitting by my mom and quiet. And she just sent me this text saying she wished we were able to talk more. She just kind of said a bunch of different things, but one that she looked up to me. And some other things that just brought a lot of comfort. Now, I don't know if she felt somewhere that maybe she should sit and stuff like that. If she felt something was coming. But for me, it felt like that was her message of her last goodbye to me. And we may or may not receive that in other situations, but I know God knows us personally, and He will give us these little things to help us get through. Especially as um, we've gotten older, I really don't see a lot of my extended family quite as much as I did when I was little. Um, and so it's been a little while since we've kind of all gotten together, but the day I actually got in this car, um, I went back to my grandma's and I was talking to her and then my aunt and my aunt that passed away and so that was my last conversation. Kind of got her caught up a lot of things in my life. And that was another big blessing because if not it's been quite a long time since we've actually had a conversation um, to sit down. And so to know I kind of had that was another <laughs> great thing to have. And I know a lot of my other family, I'm sure there's a lot of other stories, a lot of things, and maybe there's different, and maybe they'll watch this <laughs> if you are, then hey. And I think for anyone, it's just like you're loved and God is there for you. If you believe in him or not, there is no way in this world that there cannot be a God, that you cannot receive that peace if you're open. I know he is there for you and he will help and guide you and he loves you and he will help you through these hard times. If you're struggling with the death of a loved one, if you're struggling from pain, addiction, anxiety, depression, 
you feel alone and lost. Maybe it's financial struggles or struggles in a marriage or fights with friends or family or whatever is out there. He will help you find that peace and find the ways that will help you. He will give you those little blessings even when you don't feel like in the moment that you're receiving anything. But I know he's there for you. And he will help you. You just have to open up and it might not be always in your timing but he's there don't give up he will help you he will give you really give you a lot of blessings I promise that oh. and I think one of our biggest things is just to be open to be able to tell and I know at least for me this has been very therapeutic to get this out I've been just needing to just talk and just to express and not just keep it bottled up and so I encourage you if you need to open up and tell a story to a close friend or family and someone that you can trust and just listen and maybe that's when you tell them, say, just please just listen to what I'm going through, no matter what that struggle is. And I know that you can find that relief and just be able to open up and not hold things bottled in. So I'm starting to keep this video um, a little less exciting than recent than what I would normally do, but um, I hope it can help someone else out in whatever situation it is. Oh. And if you want to talk, I'm open. Send me a message on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram. My username is below, and I'd love to be able to talk through, uh, maybe share more about how my church works, um, and kind of our belief system, because that is one of the biggest things that helped me heal from my uncle, and then from this situation, too. I'd love to be able to share that, um, maybe clear up anything, maybe answer some questions. Um, so let me know um, what you're thinking. <laughs> know you're special and you're worth it and that things do get better they do all right well I'm gonna close the vlog um yeah this is not what I was planning on doing this weekend um, but it's good it will all be good Alrighty. Hope you have a great day. Great night. Bye, I love you.